So the last thing we need to do in Excel is to create some graphs or as Excel calls it charts. So you'll see I've put the heading on this side, on the right side. And the reason for that is, is so that Excel can pick it up as the title of the chart. So I prefer always using recommended charts. And let's just quickly talk about the types of charts. Um, you need a minimum of two charts and they don't have to be different types. So if both of those, the data is more, most suitable for a column chart, do a column chart. You don't have to have weird and interesting ones. The only time a pie chart is suitable is when this individual value makes up a part of the whole. So the number of boys versus girls in the school, there is a total that is suitable. But the number of wins per team, let's say the soccer team um, for uh, under 14 and under 15, you can't really put that in a graph because there isn't a total answer. Okay not in a pie chart anyway. A bar chart is ideal for when your labels are quite long. So if the labels have a longer description, then a bar chart would be suitable. Otherwise, a line chart is only suitable if it indicates change over time. So it's unlikely that you'll have data that suits that. If you really want to do something interesting, instead of a pie chart, you can use a tree map or a sunburst. But I'd say that's about the most interesting that you can get. I'm just going to insert a straightforward column chart. All right, so the only thing I want to still show you is some key elements that has to be present for you to be able to interpret the chart correctly. There has to be a clear heading. Now, personally, I'd actually recommend making the heading a bit longer, almost if possible, your actual question. I think that would be the best is if it's not extremely long. A shortened version of your question that's not as short as just these three words so that it's very clear what your graph is actually about. Data labels are critical. You have to have data labels whether it's a pie chart or a bar chart or anything. Data labels are critical and in a column chart like this you have to have at least one axis title so that you know what the numbers actually represent. If you have a chart where it's a pie chart, for example, you have to have a legend so that you see what each color means, all those kind of things. Just check if there's any of these chart elements that can make the chart easier to interpret, then please use it. Now, if you want to, you can change the style of your chart a little bit, but then just make sure that all your charts that you use end up in the same style, please. You then need to move these charts to your graphs tab and um, for this one can I just please ask don't use cut and copy because that does sometimes end up as a picture then instead of as a chart so please use the move chart tool to move it to the graphs area correctly all right so you'll have two or three graphs over here Three would be better because it just makes the interpretation for phase two easier because you have to come up with three findings and I find a graph to be the easiest for that. Just make sure that all your graphs have all the relevant elements that they need. I just want to emphasize again that even if your analysis in Excel wasn't completely useful all the time, the graphs have to actually prove a point in your research. It can't just be random data. You have to be able to say, hmm, from this I can see that a cat is the favorite pet of the people I've um, asked. You have to actually be able to interpret the data and make meaningful conclusions from the representation of the data in your graphs.